On the 15th of August, the church celebrates the Dormition of the Theotokos, or the Death of Mary. As with many of our historical events and teachings, we can learn a lot about them through iconography. So today we're going to take a look at the Orthodox icon of the Dormition. This video is not going to be an exhaustive resource on the Dormition or our understanding of these events. It will just be a short introduction into some of the things that can be learnt about the event through the icon that we will see in most Orthodox churches around the world. The word Dormition means the falling asleep. The word Dormition has the same origin as our word dormitory, which means a place for sleeping. An old Greek word for dormitory is actually cemetery. So within these words you have an understanding of the Christian concept of death as a sleep from which we are awakened by Christ who rose from the dead. The teachings and the traditions surrounding the death of Our Lady changed in the Western Catholic world in the late Middle Ages. So while in most historical art museums across Europe you will see Western art depicting the Dormition, there is a point in time in which this art completely stops. The reasons behind this change in theology and belief is complex and outside the scope of this episode. But it is to say that the icon of the Dormition that we're going to talk about today is mostly seen in Orthodox churches. There is a lot going on in this image, and icons of the Dormition will vary from place to place. The icon deals with the Dormition of the Theotokos, or the death of Mary, the woman who bore Christ, the woman who carried God within her. So why should such a holy woman have to die when people like Enoch and Elijah were taken up to heaven before death? And the answer to that is another deeply theological one that is outside the scope of the episode, but what needs to be remembered is who her son is, and her son defeated death. Death no longer works the way it used to, it's no longer the scary thing that we think of it. It is now something greater, because it has been reworked by the Messiah. Christians are not scared of death, and neither was the Theotokos. According to tradition, she knew her death was coming, and even though those around her were sad when they learned that, she was overjoyed, because she was now looking forward to a full reunion with her son and God. This icon depicts the funeral. In many versions of this icon, there is something strange happening in the bottom middle of the image. It is said that a Jewish priest of Jerusalem, upon seeing the funeral procession, was angry. He didn't like the idea of seeing the mother of Jesus so honoured and so loved, and he came up to the funeral to upset it. He wanted to push over the funeral bier where Our Lady was lying to throw it to the ground. According to the story, he stretched out his hands towards it, and just as he was about to reach it, an angel of God removed his hands. And that is what is happening here. In the Old Testament, it was absolutely forbidden to touch the Ark of the Covenant, in which the old law was kept, the old covenant with God. So how much more dangerous is it to dishonor the Theotokos, the Ark of the New Covenant, who carried within her Christ himself, God himself? When this priest saw what he had done, and saw what had been done to him, he suddenly realized who this woman was, and he suddenly understood how valuable she was to God, and he understood exactly who her son was. He repented, and Peter the Apostle picked up the severed hands and healed the priest. The priest then went on to become a member of the church himself. Surrounding the funeral is a crowd of friends of Our Lady. The apostles are there, many biblical characters are there, as well as friends of hers from that first century of Christianity, including bishops like St. Timothy, for instance. One person who is not there is St. Thomas the Apostle. According to tradition, he arrived late for the funeral here in Jerusalem, and he was very saddened by this, because he, like the other apostles, had actually been brought there by miraculous means. These miraculous ways are actually shown in several versions of the icon. You will see clouds carrying the apostles to Jerusalem, and Thomas arrived in a similar way, but late. And he asked, could he go to the tomb and could they open the tomb so he could say his final farewells? And once again, it was shown here how much God trusted Thomas, for Thomas to be part of revealing truths and knowledge to the apostles. Because when they opened the tomb, they found that she was gone, that she had been taken physically up to heaven. As well as showing us how holy and how pure she is, this story also reminds us of our coming resurrection. This event can sometimes be seen in its own icon, or referred to at the top of the Dormition icon. The center of the icon is the funeral procession, and the Theotokos lies on a bed of red. This bed is also seen as mirroring the one that we see in the icon of the Nativity. 
Before the bed is a candle, sometimes two, representing Christ, the light and life of the world to whom she gave birth. And behind her, in this icon, is Jesus Christ himself, holding in his arms the soul of his mother as if it were a small and innocent child. This beautifully parallels the icon in which Christ is held as an infant by his mother. Just as she once held him in her arms, he now holds her in his. As she brought him into the world, he is about to bring her into the heavenly kingdom. It is an image that also beautifully shows who will bring us into the heavenly kingdom. Surrounding Christ is the light of divinity, the light of heaven, full of the angels. One of the beautiful things about this particular icon is that it portrays a human event and a divine event, an earthly event and a heavenly event happening simultaneously in one single image. So, amongst many things that this icon teaches us, it is a reminder for us to attend the Divine Liturgy at church, a place in which the heavenly and the earthly meet, a place in which an earthly event takes place simultaneously with a divine event, an event that we attend, accompanied by our friends, by the saints, by Jesus Christ, and by his Holy Mother. That is another episode in our Icons series, and if you want to see the other Icon videos we have done, please have a look elsewhere through our channel. And there are more icons, of course, to come down the road. There's so much to learn about icons, though, that I do recommend that if you want to know more, head to an Orthodox church and talk with the priest after the service. This episode was accompanied with a cup of tea made with chrysanthemums, and it's very sweet and delicious.